I want to thank all of you for being here. This morning represents an important moment for us because we celebrate first and foremost children's vision of children. And this is our way of saying that we see you, we feel you, we hear you, but more importantly, you have a role to play. And I don't want any of you to ever forget that because this country will be as good as what you allow it to be. And when you look in the mirror, you need to see someone you love. You need to see someone you will uplift all the time. But when you also look in the mirror, you need to recognize that you're only one person and that it takes not just one person, but a whole village, a whole country to raise you. And it means that you need to work together. Work what? Work how? Work together with each other if we are going to make this the best place for you to live and to be able to enjoy life as you grow older. I want to thank the artists, these three brothers. I don't think that I've come across a trio of brothers painting a mural before, and therefore I want to salute you and thank you to all of the other artists who have been working across the country. And finally, there is nothing that pleases my heart more that this mural is in the National Botanical Gardens. So thank you, congratulations, and give three cheers for the children of Barbados and the artists for this mural that I am about to unveil. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Hip hip. Hooray. Thank you.
this mural is revealing a very fascinating, a very interesting story. It is telling me and most of the adults present that this world has changed significantly. Because as a little boy, many, many, many decades ago, <laughs> we were forced to obey this English um, proverbs. As the, pre as the Reverend said, prison should be seen and not heard. In other words, as children, we live in a world of exclusion. This mural this morning represents inclusion. It speaks to accommodating everyone in spite of race. I had a bodies, <laughs> gender, age, sexuality, religion, or ability. This drawing is depicting little children confabulating with adolescents, adults, Muslims with Rasters and Christians, Orients with Caucasians conversing, and the disabled being included. As I said earlier, it speaks directly to inclusion. Now similarly, the features in this botanical garden will also speak to inclusion. And very shortly, the public will be witnessing the creation of an inclusive botanical landscape displaying, for example, fruit gardens located or even interfacing with flower gardens. We'll be speaking to an amphitheater that is being constructed to entertain not only the energetic and the strong, but also the elderly and the challenged. There are going to be nature trails for the regular walkers and joggers, and simultaneously, there are going to be shared areas for relaxation, gratification, and meditation. And it is very important that I state that all these features being installed in this garden were suggested by Barbadians of all races at town hall meetings many, many years ago. Hence, inclusion has been our focus from inception. And why, in, why inclusion is important? Because today you are the children, but tomorrow you will be the take, caretakers of this landscape. You are going to be the decision makers. You are going to be their presidents, prime ministers, ministers, permanent secretaries, dendrologists, dendrochronologists, crop nutritionists, geneticists, and all of the other professions and disciplines that are needed to save this planet. And on this note, we should commend both the Honorable Prime Minister and the Minister of Environment, the Honorable Agent Ford, for being able to persuade the Ministry of Education to agree for the very first time in Barbados to, to include the verb of inclusion, to include the discipline of dendrology to the National Development Scholarship List. And what we are actually doing here, we are building capacity that would allow us to competently manage and even reduce Barbados' green deficit. I won't speak too much on the green deficit because we is a deficit. These specialized training programs can only be viewed as future investments because addressing the island's green deficit going forward will require an assortment of specialized skills. For example, transforming and managing approximately 500 hectare tiers of botanical landscapes here in Waterford, both the national and international botanic gardens. We are going to need skills to manage the one million trees we have been plant that are being planted around Barbados and the many plain and green sites being established, the national park and woodlands in the Scotland district, ergal ecosystems, mangroves and coastal woodlands, and all of the other green spaces. So I want to, in closing, by saying that I want to emphasize that on this green trajectory, we can only anticipate positive outcomes. As these green initiatives speak to food security, which by extension encompasses nutrition and diets, they also speak 
the carbon sequestration and climate amelioration, noise, and dust pollution. I, I engaged in jobs already, but I, we have many advocates, and I don't have time to explain how trees would absorb noise, um, dust and noise. Soil and water conservation, we are the 15th most water scarce country on the planet. And of course, the protection of our marine resources and all of the other environmental issues affecting fallen development states. And I want to finish with saying, as adults, we have started a green relay race. And shortly, we'll be handing over the baton to you. And we expect an aggr aggressive impetus in every single trade before you hand the baton, uh, baton over to your successor. And I want to finish on a famous quote by the Prime Minister. And that quote is, we are in this together. Thank you very much. When does a mental health issue become a problem? When should you reach out for help? I'm Chris Nan Hurdle, clinical psychologist and certified life coach. Mental health issues interrupt a person's daily functions. An issue becomes a disorder when a person isn't able to carry out their everyday activities, like household duties, personal upkeep and hygiene, or interferes with their ability to function socially, to interact with others inside the household, or interferes with their ability to function on the job or carry out other activities. If a person finds themselves needing to self-isolate, lose in touch with reality, or having an impaired ability to think, reason, or function, and if this occurs over a period of days, weeks, or months, then it is time that they reach out for help. Barbadians, we invite you to get involved and play your part as we clean and green Barbados. Come into your community with media launches, bulk waste collection exercises, community engagement sessions, and giveaways. Get on board. Let's keep Barbados clean and green. Beautiful, beautiful. Distinguished guests all, cabinet colleagues, and most importantly, the children of this country. I'm happy to have you here this year. Good morning and happy World's Children's Day. Good morning, good morning, good morning, children. Um, today, I want to start by saying that almost everything great in this world has been produced by young children. Almost everything great. And what I see before me with this mural is a great production by our young people. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> the, maybe talking under the general theme of inclusivity, I see a fusion of colors. And I'm proud to represent the green and the blue economy. I see turquoise on the and the uh, mural as well, which is a mixture of the two. Because we must include all these things if we are to have a successful society. And my speech will be very short today because what I want to talk about and encourage each and every one of you to be involved in the sciences. Because just beyond this mural, which adds beauty to the botanical garden, and you know that the trees make the surrounding more aesthetically pleasing. When you look around, you see the nice, beautiful landscapes, the greenery. It adds to the imagination. It makes you feel a sense of comfort and happiness. But along with that, and the only way that we can have those successful gardens and building our systems is if we have the sense being realized and the involvement of the sciences and the inclusion of the senses. So just beyond that wall, you will see three buildings located at the back. 
We call them the herbarium centers, the centers that will be responsible for ensuring that we have the right um, information from the dry leaves, the taxonomy center, which is just at the top, which looks at the different shapes of the leaves to make a determination on plants. And of course, further back is the germplasm center, which looks at the genetic information to ensure that we have disease-free crops that can survive the test of times. The importance of this is to encourage you young people to get involved in those things that will cause your own survival. So when you go and do the 11 plus exam and those who are at the secondary school level, I want you to start thinking about these other avenues. And the same way you would think about being a doctor, lawyer, some may think about being a minister or even the prime minister. There, is, there are other avenues I want you to explore if we as a country will be able to say to the rest of the world, we have the experts here to deal with the gullies in our ecosystem. We have the dendrologist like Nigel. He must not be the only one in the Western Hemisphere. I need another dendrologist from this same very crowd. So I am encouraging Blossom and the Branch and all the other uh, players involved to come and look at the canopies like Minister Abrams. I want us to be able to, to bring ourselves together to understand that these sciences are very important for the survival of our country. So whether it's the studies of the soil, the trees, the, uh, the study of the, our marine space, the sea, as we know it, um, the fruits, what, irrespective of where, wherever avenue you look at, I want us to start looking at those things in the area of ecology so that our environment be preserved, so that our biodiversity would be preserved. It is inc inc incumbent on you to take responsibility for your country. And as I close today, I just want to say thanks from the bottom of my heart and to encourage you to continue to do credit to your nation, Barbados, wherever you go. And, and in closing, because it will be remiss of us to have these activities by not allowing um, those persons who were integral and involved in the painting of the mural, the artist himself, to say a few words because in the same way that he can paint and make those beautiful colors with his brush, he has a red flag in his mouth where he can paint and, and, and colorful language so that we can understand what it was involved in this whole build out and this process of this beautiful mural. So I want to invite today Mr. Sergio Charles to come and say a few words as it relates to the mural that he was involved in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful day. And again, happy worlds, children there. Thank you. We thank you, Minister Adrian Ford. Hi, good morning to the ministers. Good morning to specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, children. Uh, my name is Sergio Charles. My brother to the left of me is Alexia Charles. And my brother to the right of me is Nikolai Charles. Together, we are Santrio Creative. Um, you know, when we went about doing this mural, um, we sat down, we had a brainstorm. Actually, let me go back slightly. How many children in here like art? Oh, wow, that's great to see. Um, I am very encouraged to see that, you know, we all were drawing from very young, and y'all can take down your hands. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we were all drawing from very young, uh, from as early as three years old, and we always had a dream of working together. So as I said, from the beginning, we sat down, we came up with a, an idea, and that just goes to show that if you come up with an idea and you put enough hard work into it, it can come to fruition. So the same way when we were three years old that we wanted to work together to be this group of young men producing artwork around the nation to inspire children like you. The same way you can go to school, whether it is that you want to be an artist, whether you want to be a doctor, a minister, whatever you want to be, you can fulfill those dreams. And just like the mural depicts what you plant and what you water and give attention to is what you will reap. So continue to strive at school, and I just want to thank UNICEF for the opportunity. I want to thank 
the ministry for the opportunity as well. And we look forward to doing a lot more work with the ministry and with UNICEF and also with the, the young people that came out. So thank you very much. Thank you to my brothers. I want to really thank my older brother, Nicolai Charles. He is the master muralist. So, I mean, the amount of work that he put in, I also want to thank my mom and my dad. They came over and they did a ton of work as well. I want to thank my younger brother. And that just goes to show you can stick together as a community, stick together as a family, and great things you can achieve. Thank you very much. <laughs>